For those of us who understand history and understand sound monetary policy, the idea that gold could be a forbidden cure, it just flies in the face of all logic, reason, and common sense. However, it is strictly verboten in the economics profession and among financial policy makers, and that's why we are going to tackle it head on, thanks to somebody from the mainstream media with a huge publication and a very rich man. Let's explore! You may have already guessed who I'm talking about. This person is considered a gold bug, but really doesn't talk about it as often as many of the pundits and those of us who follow some of the others. You know their names for sure, but I'm talking about Steve Forbes. He has written a piece on his own magazine about this subject that I'm going to talk about and review here with you and reference in this piece. If you enjoy videos like this where I talk about the fundamentals, I'll talk about the news with regards to precious metals. I hope you will consider pressing that thumbs up button below and subscribing to the channel as well as hitting that notification bell. All of it does help and it'll keep you abreast of all the latest information that comes on this channel. And hopefully you'll see some nice pieces as well here too, such as the example of here. And I'll explain why I show some of these pieces as well as we are now seeing gold now within spitting distance of record highs. But the subject of gold is certainly something that's just dismissed by much of the mainstream media and in uh, economic circles. It's just not something discussed or really considered or taken seriously. Many of us remember back in the day uh, when Ron Paul asked Ben Bernanke if gold was money. No, he said, it's a relic essentially. You know, and he didn't necessarily say that, but uh, he didn't consider it money. A gold-based monetary system would have prevented the present woes, according to Steve Forbes here, not to mention the century's previous economic and banking disasters. Talk about cancel culture. For years, the gold standard under which the United States successfully operated from the time of George Washington to the early 1970s and by the way, there was some hiccups certainly uh, during that time. In fact, uh, the Civil War is one. It wasn't all smooth sailing, even with a gold standard or even a part of a gold standard, which is what we were on from 1944 to, uh, to 1971. But I digress from Steve uh, Forbes' words. Uh, it has been the great unmentionable in government and academic circles where even discussion of the topic is derisively dismissed and scoffed at and laughed at. I will add that as well. Inflation never occurs with a gold standard. That's the next sentence that I strongly disagree with, with Steve Forbes on. I did a video recently talking about how, yes, inflation can occur and has occurred under a gold standard. There's been periods of inflation and there's been periods of panic and uncertainty. The Panic of 1837 is one, and the Panic of 1857 is another one. However, the Panic of 1857, uh, even though it was tied to a banking collapse, uh, and with innovation, with the uh, with Cyrus McCormick's uh, uh, new Reaper, uh, it also was the time when the uh, SS South America uh, sank, with all of that gold coming in from, uh, from San Francisco that very well could have led to a... Uh, the the uh, the the panic that we saw during that time. However, with that being said, that's just a little nuance. I didn't want to just brush over that and say that everything is perfect under a gold standard. Because make no mistake, no matter what we do with gold, humans will be involved, and with humans comes error, and nothing is perfect. Not even uh, if we implement gold. Uh, under one, we'd have been spared the calamity of the 2008 and 09 financial crisis. That's largely true. The subsequent unprecedented suppression of interest rates and the binge of money printing before and during the pandemic, all of which have led to the mess that we are in today. Money is a measure of value. Just as scales measure weight, clocks measure time, and rulers measure length. We instinctively understand the need for fixed weights and measurements 
in the marketplace. The volume of a gallon doesn't change each day, nor does the number of ounces in a pound, the inches in a foot, and the minutes in an hour. An economy works best when its currency is a reliable measure of value. I'm going to stop right there and say that as well, too, that it was, uh, you know, uh, it's more beneficial for us to have a stable dollar than to have a dollar that is all over the place in terms of its uh, value from one year to the next. And right now, we've been seeing it uh, getting out of control with inflation. Uh, but, you know, a strong dollar is based off of stability. And right now, the dollar is uh, is inflating, but it is the most stable of all the currencies out there. And why is that? Because other nations rely on it. And that's really the only reason. Because if they didn't, if it wasn't involved in 60% of the transactions out there, make no mistake, we'd have hyperinflation and be in a period of stagflation for sure. Even we, as a first world nation, we would be there. Money that is fixed in value makes buying, selling, and investing easier. Just as fixed weights in grocery stores make it easier to shop. A pint of ice cream today is the same size and amount as it was yesterday, except for periods of shrinkflation where they charge the same amount, but you get a little less of a certain product, but that's an aside point. For a variety of reasons, gold has for thousands of years kept its intrinsic value better than anything else, better than silver, platinum, palladium, copper, coconut shells, or cryptocurrencies. And you know what? That's a somewhat controversial statement, but I agree with it. It's actually been a, a more stable store of value than silver. And I want to say the reason why that is, is because back during biblical times, as I've recently mentioned in a video uh, on Easter, um, where I talked about how silver was more rare back then, probably valued much more in those days because it was less of it. But since 1900, there's been a lot of silver that has been mined, a whole heck of a lot of it. And we are not running in a silver shortage anytime soon. We may have a shortage of silver product during these squeezes that we are witnessing. We're in the midst of one right now. But nonetheless, uh, there is no silver shortage. Gold is rare. There's more gold mined now. Many people feel we've reached peak gold, but gold is much more rare than silver, much more rare. And this is why talks of a gold standard is something that should be considered, um, at least considered as part of a rules-based monetary system, as Ted Cruz proposed uh, when he was running for president in 2016. The article continues, when the price of gold changes, it's not the value of the metal that's changing, it's the value of the currency the gold is being priced in that is fluctuating. And that fluctuation is based off of the value of the dollar or or the strength of the dollar, really, at the particular time, which that strength is perceived strength because of the reasons I mentioned earlier. If we return to gold standard, Mr. Forbes says, and fix the dollar to the yellow metal at, say, $1,900 an ounce, all that would mean is that the price of gold rose above $1,900. We'd reduce the money supply. If it went below that, we'd increase the money supply. Contrary to myth, a gold standard doesn't artificially restrict the economy's money supply. It simply means the money created has a stable value. That essentially means we're at a new paradigm shift of thinking in that regard. But important to understand. From 1775 to 1900, when we expanded from a small agrarian country into an industrial giant, the U.S. money supply increased 160-fold, while the gold supply increased only about threefold. Without really intending to, the U.S. blew up uh, the post-World War II gold standard in the early 70s, and we in the world never went back on it. We have suffered for that decision with an average economic growth far below our historic track record. Consider from the 1940s, after recovering from the distortions of World War II, until we abandoned the gold standard, the average annual growth rate of the U.S. was around 4.2%. After that, until the pandemic, the average was 2.7%. Had we maintained our gold-based average, the medium household income in the U.S. would now be around $110,000, not today's $70,000. Um, it would be $40,000 more than that. History's lesson is clear. Even though people who should know better don't want to face the up to it, a nation always performs better when on a gold standard. 
that and low tax rates are fundamental for long-term prosperity always. And you know what? I would agree with that for sure. But the thing is, is no nation is under a gold standard. There's been talk about some nations going on it, but uh, I don't know that it would necessarily work for some of these nations that are literally at their wits end and that's the only place to go. But I think it would certainly be on the road to prosperity or the road to recovery regardless. But nonetheless, a nation like ours, we would benefit. It would be a good thing for sure. And uh, But essentially, this last sentence is what he wants to do in the mainstream press. And for those um, reading this, uh, he wants to toss out the taboo on gold and let the debate begin. And I think we very well could see it as more and more people are starting to stack uh, gold and silver. Uh, this will come up, I think. Uh, and so it's interesting. And I applaud Steve Forbes for bringing it up. And I agree largely with what he said here. Uh, Steve Forbes, by the way, owns Forbes magazine, was also a presidential candidate and did a great job on Saturday Night Live along with Rudy Giuliani. But that's an aside point. Now, the goal that you see here um, is, is interesting. There's two kind of collector gold pieces, one semi-collectible. And, uh, and I've been kind of moving in a direction to uh, as the prices of gold have gone up, uh, the premiums of these collectible gold pieces have stayed about the same which makes it a bit more attractive. If you're going to spend, you know, well over two grand for gold, you might as well spend a couple hundred dollars more and get a collectible piece. So I'm going to move these out of the way now, and I'm going to show the latest piece that, that I have um, now purchased, and we're going to unbox it, and I'm going to show you here, uh, let you see this. Uh, this is part of a, um, it's kind of a big box here. We're going to try to, try to get into it here. And let's see what we've got. There we go. This is from the Royal Mint. And uh, it's the, sort of a beginning of a collection. There's a box within a box here. Um, and a collection that I'm doing, putting together here. And when I get everything unboxed and I... Uh, upon the other pieces that I get, uh, I'm going to uh, explain my whole reasoning behind this. But for this, for the sake of this video, I'm just going to show this. Uh, seeing it for the first time, box within a box, within another box, within yet another box. This is the Queen Elizabeth Memorial Sovereign PA4. For those of you know, I like uh, I like them thick, and this is uh, no exception here. There it is. Wow, beautiful. Nice memorial sovereign here. This is uh, almost a half an ounce of gold. And you can see the thickness, not terribly thick, but thick enough. I'm gonna take the lid off of so you can see the beauty of the strike. Well done by the Royal Mint. Yes, indeed. There's the other side with the king on it. And you can see how thick it is. Beautifully done. A little bit of uh, dust or something on the coin. <laughs> See if I can blow that off. There, well, they're still there. But anyways, otherwise, it's a very nice piece. So there it is. And I love the attractive box that it comes in there. Serialized as well. So there it is, 2022. Memorial Sovereign. Nice wooden box there. Certificate of Authenticity serialized there. $16.99. There it is. Put that back. Let me know what your thoughts are. And I'm going to extend a multitude of gratitude to all of you for taking the time to watch this video. And to encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.